Now turn to part two, questions eight to thirteen. You will hear a radio presenter talking about weekend events in the Carlisle area. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have forty-five seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. And that was a lovely song, especially for Sandra. I hope you were listening, Sandra. Now it's time for our what's on around Carlisle this weekend. There are lots of things happening. First of all, Lamley School has contacted us to tell us all about the concert they're giving on Saturday evening. That's the eighth. The music starts at seven thirty, not at seven o'clock as advertised, and will finish about eight thirty. After which coffee will be available. They say it's an evening of songs and dances for everyone. There'll be light refreshments afterwards in the library. That will be included in the cost of the ticket. Do go along to this concert, as the school will use all the money to buy some new sports equipment for the children. Last year's concert was a great success, and the school was able to buy a new computer for the children to use, and also pay for a trip to London. Next, I have some details of a regular weekend activity. The walking club are going for a long-distance walk around the lake this Sunday. Everyone should meet at 10 a.m. in the car park by the lake. Don't forget, you can get a bus from the market square if you don't have any transport. Take a packed lunch and some warm clothes with you. If the weather's nice, you'll be able to have a picnic by the side of the lake. Have fun. On Saturday evening, there's a talk for the International Club by a well-known local writer, Sarah Jones, who teaches at the university. You may have read her latest novel. It's in all the bookshops at the moment. Well, she's giving a talk at eight p.m. on Saturday evening in the library. That's the building next to the theatre, in the centre of town. I'm sure you'll find it very interesting. Sarah has just returned from Africa and will talk about all her experiences there. She travelled through three different countries and met lots of interesting people, including a famous actor. Now, the International Club would like to remind you that the talk is for everyone, not just members. They say it's a family evening, and under sixteens get in free. They also say it's best to make sure you book a ticket first. I'm sure the evening will be very popular, so take their advice and have a great time. Now listen again. And that was a lovely song, especially for Sandra. I hope you were listening, Sandra. Now it's time for our what's on around Carlisle this weekend. There are lots of things happening. First of all, Lamley School has contacted us to tell us all about the concert they're giving on Saturday evening. That's the eighth. The music starts at seven thirty, not at seven o'clock as advertised, and will finish about eight thirty. After which coffee will be available. They say it's an evening of songs and dances for everyone. There'll be light refreshments afterwards in the library. That will be included in the cost of the ticket. Do go along to this concert, as the school will use all the money to buy some new sports equipment for the children. Last year's concert was a great success, and the school was able to buy a new computer for the children to use, and also pay for a trip to London. Next, I have some details of a regular weekend activity. 
the walking club, are going for a long-distance walk around the lake this Sunday. Everyone should meet at 10 a.m. in the car park by the lake. Don't forget, you can get a bus from the market square if you don't have any transport. Take a packed lunch and some warm clothes with you. If the weather's nice, you'll be able to have a picnic by the side of the lake. Have fun! On Saturday evening, there's a talk for the International Club by a well-known local writer, Sarah Jones, who teaches at the university. You may have read her latest novel. It's in all the bookshops at the moment. Well, she's giving a talk at 8 p.m. on Saturday evening in the library. That's the building next to the theatre, in the centre of town. I'm sure you'll find it very interesting. Sarah has just returned from Africa and will talk about all her experiences there. She travelled through three different countries and met lots of interesting people, including a famous actor. Now, the International Club would like to remind you that the talk is for everyone, not just members. They say it's a family evening and under-16s get in free. They also say it's best to make sure you book a ticket first. I'm sure the evening will be very popular, so take their advice and have a great time. That is the end of part two. Now turn to part three, questions 14 to 19. You will hear a recorded message about hotels in the National Park. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part three. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Thank you for calling the National Park Hotel Information Line. We're going to tell you about accommodation in Upton, Lakeside and Loughton. First in Upton is the three-star country house hotel, the Marston Hotel, which is in a wonderful position and is especially suitable if you enjoy walking. A double room will cost from £158, including meals. You can request a picnic lunch if you're going out on the hills all day. The phone number to ring is 0196 55469. Our second choice in Upton is the Bristol Hotel. A one-star hotel with just seven rooms and set in its own pleasant gardens. A double room here is between 70 and 90 pounds, with dinner included. The phone number is 0196 55592. It's good value, but please note they are closed in January. In Lakeside, is the two-star Ferndale Hotel. There are 15 rooms here and the hotel is on a hill with a wonderful view of the lake. A double room here will cost from 130 to 220 pounds, although that does include use of the tennis courts. The phone number for the Ferndale at Lakeside is 0196 622635. The last of our National Park selection is at Loughton, just seven miles south of Lakeside. Here we recommend the three-star Fir Trees Hotel, which has already won two prizes for its English cooking. It has 20 rooms in all, 
and is in a good position for touring in the national park. A double room will cost £185 a night. The phone number is 01786 481 601. Thank you for calling the National Park Hotel Information Line. Now listen again. Thank you for calling the National Park Hotel Information Line. We're going to tell you about accommodation in Upton, Lakeside and Loughton. First in Upton is the three-star country house hotel, the Marston Hotel, which is in a wonderful position and is especially suitable if you enjoy walking. A double room will cost from £158, including meals. You can request a picnic lunch if you're going out on the hills all day. The phone number to ring is 0196 55 469. Our second choice in Upton is the Bristol Hotel, a one-star hotel with just seven rooms and set in its own pleasant gardens. A double room here is between 70 and 90 pounds with dinner included. The phone number is 0196 55 592. It's good value, but please note they are closed in January. In Lakeside is the two-star Ferndale Hotel. There are 15 rooms here and the hotel is on a hill with a wonderful view of the lake. A double room here will cost from 130 to 220 pounds. Although that does include use of the tennis courts. The phone number for the Ferndale at Lakeside is 0196 622635. The last of our national park selection is at Loughton, just seven miles south of Lakeside. Here we recommend the Three Star Fir Trees Hotel, which has already won two prizes for its English cooking. It has 20 rooms in all and is in a good position for touring in the National Park. A double room will cost £185 a night. The phone number is 01786 481 601. Thank you for calling the National Park Hotel Information Line. That is the end of Part 3. Now turn to part 4, questions 20 to 25. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear a conversation between a boy, John, and a girl, Louise. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, put a tick in the box under A for yes. If it is not correct, put a tick in the box under B for no. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part 4. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. John! Oh, Louise, hi. I've just arrived for my singing lesson with Mrs Thompson. What are you doing here? I've come for a singing lesson too. Well, if it's a secret, I won't tell anyone. 
It's okay, Louise. I'm going to be in a musical show, so everyone will know soon. Really? But can you actually sing then? Well, I was taught to sing at school, you know. But now I'm in the show, I thought I'd better have a few more lessons. Good idea. What do you think of Mrs. Thompson? She's really strict, isn't she? She is. But I think if you want to sing properly, then she's the best teacher. You don't have to like her to see that she's really brilliant. Oh, I suppose so. It's just that she makes me feel so nervous. How did you get chosen for the show? Well, I went to see a few musical shows before Christmas. I don't know why, because I never really liked them before. And I thought I'd like to do that. So I tried for a part in the show at the Regent Theatre. And got it. Well done. So, have you actually done a show yet? Yes, we've done a practice show just for family and friends. So, how did you feel? Well, when we'd finished, I wanted to cry because I was so delighted that I'd actually got through it without making any big mistakes. <laughs> But did people like it? Yes, they did, and it was great to have an audience. I would love to be able to sing and have everybody listen and clap. It's quite hard to do a musical show, actually. You have to dance as well as sing. It's hard work to get it right. Oh, I wouldn't be keen on that. I'm only a singer, really. When does the show open? On the ninth of October. Would you like a couple of free tickets? Oh, yes, thanks. Now listen again. John. Oh, Louise. Hi. I've just arrived for my singing lesson with Mrs. Thompson. What are you doing here? I've come for a singing lesson too. Well, if it's a secret, I won't tell anyone. It's okay, Louise. I'm going to be in a musical show, so everyone will know soon. Really? But can you actually sing then? Well, I was taught to sing at school, you know. But now I'm in the show, I thought I'd better have a few more lessons. Good idea. What do you think of Mrs. Thompson? She's really strict, isn't she? She is, but I think if you want to sing properly, then she's the best teacher. You don't have to like her to see that she's really brilliant. Oh, I suppose so. It's just that she makes me feel so nervous. How did you get chosen for the show? Well, I went to see a few musical shows before Christmas. I don't know why, because I never really liked them before, and I thought I'd like to do that. So I tried for a part in the show at the Regent Theatre. And got it. Well done. So, have you actually done a show yet? Yes, we've done a practice show just for family and friends. So, how did you feel? Well, when we'd finished, I wanted to cry because I was so delighted that I'd actually got through it without making any big mistakes. <laughs> But did people like it? Yes, they did, and it was great to have an audience. I would love to be able to sing and have everybody listen and clap. It's quite hard to do a musical show, actually. You have to dance as well as sing. It's hard work to get it right. Oh, I wouldn't be keen on that. I'm only a singer, really. When does the show open? On the ninth of October. Would you like a couple of free tickets? Oh, yes, thanks. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet. That is the end of the test.